The School of Self-Knowledge presents 5 Profound Life-Changing Lessons from the Matrix Please hit like and subscribe if you enjoy this video. The Matrix is a prophetic piece of art. It is, without a doubt, one of the most iconic films of all time. On the surface, an action-adventure sci-fi thriller. Beneath, a deeply philosophical interpretation of life, the world, and the importance of self-knowledge. To reload your neural circuits if you haven't seen the film in a while, Neo, played by Keanu Reeves, begins life as Thomas Anderson, working as a software engineer by day and a notorious computer hacker by night. He believes something is wrong with the world and after meeting with fellow hackers Trinity and Morpheus, he comes to learn that his world is a computer-generated simulation, engineered by machines to keep the human race dormant while they harvest its energy to run the planet. The film still holds influence and impact. It's scarily accurate how the movie depicts current society. In modern times it seems we're all jacked into the system. Social media is literally driving us crazy. 3 billion people are living out their own Truman shows on the internet. So how do we escape the system? Number 1. You can't do it until you believe you can. What are you waiting for? You're faster than this. Don't think you are. Know you are. When Neo visits the Oracle for the first time, she teaches him the most important lesson. But you already know what I'm going to tell you. I'm not the one. Sorry, kid. You got the gift. But it looks like you're waiting for something. He learns the catalyst to all self-knowledge, to know thyself. To know thyself is what self-knowledge is all about. The understanding of what you actually are is far more important than the pursuit of what you should be. This was Neo's problem when he was first told he was, the one, he unsuccessfully pursued that identity, without understanding who he was. Do not pursue what should be, but understand what is. Why? Because in understanding what you truly are, there begins a spontaneous process of transformation. Whereas in becoming what you think you should be, there is no change at all, but a continuation of the same old thing in a different form. It's like moving around the furniture in a prison, you're still stuck in a prison. Number 2. The world as you perceive it isn't real. I thought it wasn't real. Your mind makes it real. Your brain is biologically conditioned to perceive the world through your self-image. This is based on the beliefs that you have acquired over time and conditioning. If you believe that what your mind tells you about yourself is real, your brain will literally look for evidence to prove these beliefs to be true. Just like the matrix we live in a world full of illusions. These illusions are created by the images, ideals and beliefs our mind has created. We create these for the sake of our own personal security, we feel safe in our illusions. Astrology, nationalism, social media, the idea of race and so much of spirituality and religion are just a few examples. To have supreme intelligence you must have no illusions. Our minds have become dull because of our conditioning. When you start to question your own conditioning, your mind starts to come alive and all these illusions start to fade away. But until we do, these people are still a part of that system and that makes them our enemy. You have to understand, most of these people are not ready to be unplugged. And many of them are so inert, so hopelessly dependent on the system, that they will fight to protect it. Number 3. Everyone falls the first time so free you mind. You have to let it all go, Neo. Fear, doubt, and disbelief. Free your mind. Neo, sooner or later you're going to realize, just as I did, there's a difference between knowing the path and walking the path. One of the first training programs that Neo is put through is one where he has to complete the seemingly impossible task of jumping across from one giant skyscraper to another. Before Morpheus completes the task with ease, he tells Neo to free his mind by letting go of the limiting beliefs that convince him the task is impossible, after all, it's all just a simulation. 
While Neo doesn't make the jump the first time, he comes to internalize Morpheus' teaching later on in the movie. What exactly are limiting beliefs? Limiting beliefs are beliefs that hold us back in some way. Just by believing them, we do not think, do or say the things that they discourage us to do. And in doing so we impoverish our lives. One of the main barriers all of us face to learning are the mental ones we create for ourselves. Dismissing our ability to learn a language or pick up a musical instrument is like creating a set of unwritten rules that limit our capabilities, creating a world that constrains us rather than setting us free. Failure is inevitable. But you can't fail unless you've tried. You know what you need to do but you don't because you fear falling flat on your face. There are many, firsts, throughout your entire life. Age means nothing. You may never experience your, first, of any specific thing until circumstances permit it or until you get out of your own way to try. Your first attempt might and probably will flop miserably. Accept and embrace it. The difference is not giving up after that first fall. Get up. Try again. Keep going. And if it's not for you, it's okay. You tried after falling. It can sometimes take effort to identify these limiting beliefs, just as Neo's rebirth in the Matrix was not a comfortable experience, but doing so allows us to put these myths about our own abilities to rest and chase after whatever it is that we want to learn. Number 4. Take the Red Pill. This is your last chance. After this there is no turning back. You take the blue pill. The story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. You take the red pill, you stay in Wonderland, and I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. When Neo meets Morpheus for the first time, he's offered a simple choice, learn the truth about reality by choosing to swallow a red pill, or take a blue pill and return to his old life with no memory of the Matrix. What this decision represents in the context of learning is the desire to explore the unknown. The blue pill is everything you've ever known or done, everything you're comfortable with. As humans, we're hardwired to seek certainty and avoid social exclusion because we are never afraid of the unknown, we are afraid of the known coming to an end. But as we all know, almost all the learning and growth we experience in life comes from the situations where we step outside of our comfort zone, overcome our fear of failure, and challenge ourselves to do something new, that's taking the red pill. The point is that uncertainty and discomfort is something we should seek more in learning and in life because that's where real progress often lies. Number 5. How meditation makes you more like Neo. You know that scene in The Matrix when Neo finds himself face to face with a spray of oncoming bullets. He expertly handles the situation by slowing everything down and neutralizing the bullets. They drop to the ground like pebbles before they ever reach him. A regular meditation practice can help you become impervious to the bullets in your day-to-day -day life. Those hooking thoughts, emotions, and feelings that compel you to act out automatically and sometimes in ways that you regret. Have you ever said something and then regretted it? Chances are, your regretful action was the result of getting hooked by an emotion, like anger, for instance. You have no doubt noticed that emotions, even mild ones, have quite a momentum to them. That momentum is almost inescapable when we identify with our emotions. The more we react unconsciously to an emotional trigger, the more the emotion reaction pattern becomes entrenched. The more entrenched the pattern, the more likely you are to automatically repeat the reaction the next time that emotion arises. How you can neutralize those emotional bullets like Neo. Imagine that the bullets coming at him are actually emotions arising in his awareness. Rather than get hooked and barbed by them, he is able to respond to them deftly, as is appropriate to the situation. How does he do that? By slowing things down. Meditation helps you learn to slow things down by developing a sense of space between you and your emotions, and therefore their power to hook you into certain behaviors. Meditation builds your capacity to identify your thoughts and emotions as they appear. Rather than not recognize them at all, and therefore they have compelled you to act out. When you strengthen your ability to identify thoughts and emotions during meditation, you'll find it easier to do so in your day-to-day -day life. Imagine being able to consistently spot your compelling thoughts and emotions in real time, as you interact with people, places, and things. What a game changer! This is what it means to respond to a situation rather than reacting to it.
Responding instead of reacting is living creatively as opposed to automatically. So next time you feel a strong emotion come up, think of Neo from the Matrix. Slow things down. Watch that emotion but don't act out based on the first thing that emotion tells you to do. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Our new online self-knowledge course will be a true game changer. Leave a comment if you would like to be part of the free trial.